this lesson. I'm teacher Agnes and today we are going to be discussing about algebraic expressions. Algebraic expressions. So the word algebraic is derived from the word algebra and we know that algebra deals with questions that have letters and numbers you know combined by operations. So when you come across questions like 3x plus 2y, that is algebra. So sometimes letters are used to represent numbers, and that is what we refer to as symbolic representation. If I tell you that I have a number of pens, and you don't know exactly how many pens I have, then you can say that I have x pens, okay? And that x can mean anything. It can mean two pens, three pens and so on. So when we use letters to represent numbers, then we form algebraic expressions. Now, when we form numbers and letters, the numbers and letters can also be combined using operators such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. However, later in the topic, we are going to be looking at how to add, subtract, multiply and divide algebraic expressions. Now for us to understand how to use letters to represent numbers, we are going to do an example. So in this question, we have a mother who is three times as old as her child. Then you are required to determine an algebraic expression for the sum of their ages, the difference of their ages, and the product of their ages. So you see, we don't know how old the child is. We also don't know the, the specific age of the mother. So we have to represent their ages using letters. So since the age of the child is the one that we are referring to when we talk about the mother, you know, a mother is three times as old as her child three times as, ho as old as her child. So we are referring to the age of the child first before coming up with the age of the mother. So we can decide that the mother, we have the mother, then we have the child. So let the age of the child be X years old. The age of the mother is three times. So three times X three times as old as a child. So three times x, which is equal to three x. So the symbolic representation for the age of the mother is three x, and the symbolic representation for the age of the child is x. Now we are required to form an algebraic expression for the sum of their ages, then the difference, then the product. So sum is the answer that you get when you add two numbers or two expressions. So sum, we must do some addition. So we will have three X plus X, which is equal to, so we have three X's and one X. When you add, you get four X. Then the difference of their ages, difference is obtained through subtraction. So here we will have three X minus X, which is equal to 2x. And then the product of their ages, product is obtained through multiplication. So now we have 3x multiplied by x, and this will be equal to, we have x times x here. Remember in squares we learned that a number multiplied by itself is equal to that number squared. 2 times 2 is equal to 2 squared. So x times x, is x squared. So here we have 3x squared. And those are the algebraic uh, expressions that are representing the sum, difference, and the product. So it is important that you know what these words mean. Sum means that you do the operation of addition. Difference means that you subtract. Product means that you multiply and quotient, okay, quotient, quotient is the answer you get after division, all right? 
This is the answer you get after division. Now, there are other terms that are used in these um, questions that you need to know what they mean. For instance, in this question, we had been told that the mother is three times. The word times there represents multiplication. So the mother is three times the age of the son. So you do multiplication. If word, a word like more is used, for instance, you can be told the, the age of the mother is 15 years, 20 years more than that of the son. The age of the mother is 15, is 20 years more than that of the son, meaning that the age of the mother is higher by 20 years. So when making reference, when the word more is used, it means that you add. And the word less, when it is used, it means that you subtract. So if we say that Faith is five years less than her brother, that means that if you take the age of the brother, you'll have to subtract five to get the age of Faith. Now let us look at an example that incorporates those words. Now in this example, we have two people whose ages are being compared. Ken is five years younger than Mary, find an expression for one, the sum of their ages, then two, the sum of their ages two years ago, okay? So here we have their current ages, then we have their ages two years ago. So for the current ages, we have Ken, then we have Mary. So Ken is five years younger than Mary. So like you can see, the age of Ken is being compared to the age of Mary. So we are going to give Mary a letter. We are going to give the age of Mary a letter. So let's assume that Mary is eight years old. So if Ken is five years younger than Mary, then it means that the age of Ken is less than that of Mary by five years. So since it says younger, then you are going to subtract five. So the current age of K is x minus five, and the current age of Mary is x. Now when we are asked for the sum of their ages, then we are going to add the two ages. So this will be x minus five plus x. So in this case, we have x plus x, which is equal to two x, then minus the five, okay? That will be the sum of their current ages. Then the next question is asking for the sum of their ages two years ago. So two years ago, the age of Ken was less by two years. So currently he is at x minus five, so we subtract two from his current age. Same case to Mary, this will be x minus two. So when we want to determine the sum of their ages two years ago, we are going to take x minus five minus two, then we add to x minus two. Remember sum means that we add. So this is going to be equal to x minus five minus two plus x minus two. Now this is equal to, we have x and x, x plus x is two x, then negative five minus two, minus two, which is, so negative five minus two is negative seven, negative seven minus two, which is negative nine. So this is the sum of their ages, or was the sum of their ages two years ago. So now, you can see that in this question, the word that had been used was younger, okay? So words like younger can be used, words like older, greater than, less than, those words can be used. So I want us to make a summary of the words that you can expect in the algebraic, in the word problems of algebraic expression and the operation that goes with every um, word. Now we're going to summarize the words that we are likely to find in word problems of algebraic expressions and determine the operation that goes with that word. So to begin with, we have the word sum. 
to sum requires that you perform the operation of addition. The other one is difference. Difference requires that you subtract. The other one is times, which requires that you multiply. The other one is shared, which requires that you divide. The other word is doubled. So doubled or double requires that you multiply by two. The other word is half, which requires that we divide by two. Now the other word is more, and this requires that we add. The other word is less, which requires that we subtract. The other word is younger, which requires that we subtract. Then we also have older, which requires that we add. So based on the meanings of these words, they guide you on the operation that you should take when you are solving or when you are trying to come up with an algebraic expression given a word problem. Now we are going to look at how to simplify algebraic expressions. And before we get started, we must first understand how to identify like terms and unlike terms. So we have like terms and then unlike terms. Now when we talk of terms, what do we mean? So when we talk of terms, we mean if we have an algebraic expression like 4x minus 2y plus 3z. This is one term. This is another term. This is another term. So when we look at an expression, we should be able to identify like terms and unlike terms. So like terms are the ones that have the same letter. For instance, if you have an expression like um, 4x plus 2x, you realize that the letter here is x and the letter here is x. So these two are like terms. What about unlike terms? Unlike terms have different letters. For instance, here we have 4x, here we have 2y. So the letter here is x and the letter here is y. So the two terms are unlike terms because the letters used to represent um, values there are different. So those are unlike terms. Another scenario of like terms is when you have, um, you know, the letters raised to the same power. For instance, if we have, if we have four x squared plus 3x squared. So you realize that this is x squared and this is x squared. So the two are like terms. But if you had a 5x squared minus 3x cubed. So this is x squared and this is x cubed. The powers on the x are not the same. So these two will be said to be unlike terms. These two are unlike terms. Another example is if you have, um, so let's say you have 4a squared b minus um, 4a b squared. So when you look at these two, here a is squared, here a is not squared. Here b is not squared, here b is squared. So the two are unlike terms because the powers on each letter are not the same. However, if you had a question like 6a squared b minus 4a squared b, so you notice here a squared, it is also squared here. b is not squared, it is also not squared in the other term. So these two terms are like terms. Now, after knowing how to identify like terms and unlike terms, how does that help you to 
to simplify the algebraic expressions. Now, when doing addition and subtraction, you can only add and subtract like terms, all right? You can only add or subtract like terms. And like terms cannot be added, they cannot be subtracted, all right? So let's look at an example. If we have, if we have example one here as 4x minus 2x plus 3x squared, and we are required to simplify, what will we do? So we first identify the like terms and put them together if they are not together. Luckily for that, the like terms are following each other, which means that they are together. So these two are like terms, but 3x squared is unlike because these two do not have a square on x. So we are going to subtract the two, 4x minus 2x to obtain 2x, then plus 3x squared. And that will be the final answer because you cannot add these two because they are unlike terms. Let's look at another example. Now in another example here we have 3x minus 2y plus 4x plus 6y. So when you look at this question, we have how many terms? 1, 2, 3, 4. Now they are in two categories because we have terms that have x and we have terms that have y. So we are going to put the like terms together. So starting with x, this will be 3x. Then we bring this 4x close here. It has a positive sign, so it becomes plus 4x. Then we follow with the y, minus 2y plus 6y. So now we can simplify these two. 3x minus, uh, 3x plus 4x is 7x. Negative 2y plus 6y is positive 4y. So we will have simplified this expression into 7x plus 4y. Now let us look at another example that has terms that have powers. In this next example, we are going to simplify, so this is example three, we are going to simplify p squared q plus q squared p minus three p squared q plus seven q squared p. So when you look at this question, it can be quite confusing in the beginning, but all you need is to identify which terms are the same. And for you to do that, you need to check where the powers are the same. For instance, in the first one, we have p squared and q is not squared. So the other term that has p squared is this one, and q is not squared. So these two terms are like terms. Then next, we have q squared, okay, and p is not squared. Then in this term, we also have q squared and p is not squared. Therefore, we can put the like terms together, beginning with p squared q. So this is p squared q minus 3 p squared q, then plus q squared p plus 7 q squared p. So the next thing we are going to add or subtract them. So here we have 1, okay, this is 1, minus 3, which is equal to negative 2 p squared q, then we have 1 q squared p plus 7 q squared p, which is equal to 8 q squared p. So this become, becomes the simplification or the simplified value or expression for this expression. 
So when you come across these questions that have square and cube and you know power four in them, don't get scared of them. Just identify the ones that are the same. And those will be alike terms, then you can either subtract or uh, add them. So now having learned how to simplify algebraic expressions, we are now going to learn how to expand algebraic expressions. So now learners, we are going to learn about expansion. What does the word expansion mean in math? To expand is to remove brackets. So expanding is removing brackets. So sometimes we are given algebraic expressions that require multiplication by a certain number because essentially brackets represent multiplication. So how do you remove brackets when you are dealing with an expression? So we're going to start with an example. In this example, we have 4 into brackets x plus 2y. So like you can see in this question, we have brackets. And uh, what we need to do is to remove the brackets. Now, if the brackets are here, then it means that 4 is being multiplied by x. And 4 is also being multiplied by 2y. So we are going to multiply 4 by both of these terms each at a time. So 4 times x is going to be equal to 4x. Then 4 times 2y. So since this is a number, it's going to be multiplied with the number. So 4 times 2 is 8, and then we have y. So now, um, uh, 4 into brackets x plus 2y, removing the brackets, we obtain 4x plus 8y. Let's look at another example. So in this example, we have 2x into brackets 4 minus y minus 2 into brackets x plus y. All right. So in this case, we have 2x being multiplied by 4 and negative 1. So we are going to multiply each one of them one at a time. 2x times 4 is 8x. 2x times negative y. The negative remains. Then we have 2xy. Because, you know, x times y just gives you xy. Then negative 2 times x will be negative 2x. Then we have negative times positive, which is negative 2y, because 2 times y is 2y. Now looking at this, are you able to spot any like terms? We have two like terms. We have 8x minus 2x. So we can put them together. 8x minus 2x. Then we have minus 2xy minus 2y. So 8x minus 2x gives you 6x, then minus 2xy minus 2y. So there isn't much we can do about these two because they are not like terms. So this will be your final answer. So let's look at another different scenario. In a case where you have two brackets, in one expression. How do you go about it? So if here we have 2p minus 4 into brackets 3 minus 4 into brackets x plus p. Okay, how do you go about it? So like you can see, we have two brackets. So we have the brackets, the bigger ones that are outside, and then we have the small ones that are inside. So you are expected to start with the innermost brackets. Okay? So we are going to rewrite this, but open the innermost brackets. So this is 2p minus 4 into brackets 3. So here we have negative 4 times x, which is equal to negative 4x. The negative 4 times p, which is equal to negative 4p. So like you can see, we have opened the innermost brackets. So now we can open the outermost brackets. 
So this is 2p minus 4 times 3s, 12. Then negative 4 times negative 4x. Negative times negative is positive. So this will be positive 16x. Then negative 4 times negative 4p, again will be positive 16p. Now please note, when you are multiplying, remember the sign that is outside the bracket. This is negative. So when you multiply a negative by a negative, you get a positive. When you multiply a negative by a negative, you get a positive. Now looking at this, are you able to spot any like terms? So we have two terms that have p. We have 2p plus 16p. So this will be equal to 18p. Then minus 12, then minus 16, sorry, plus 16, x. So this will be the final answer to this question. So anytime you have two brackets, you must begin from the innermost bracket. Okay? Begin from the innermost bracket, then work out from the outermost bracket. So now we are going to look at a different formation of the brackets and see how we can approach that. To expand x plus 2, then brackets um, 4 plus y, all right? x plus 2, then 4 plus y. So now in this case, you notice that x plus 2 is being multiplied by 4 plus y, meaning that x is being multiplied by 4 plus y, and positive 2 is also being multiplied by 4 plus y. So we are going to separate the two beginning with x. So x is multiplying 4 plus y, and then positive 2 is also multiplying 4 plus y. Let me repeat. x plus 2 into brackets being multiplied by 4 plus y into brackets means that the whole of this is multiplying 4 plus y. So we can separate that into x times 4 plus y, then plus 2 times 4 plus y. So now we are going to open each of the two brackets. x times 4 is 4x. x times y is xy. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times y is 2y. Okay? So looking at this, are you able to see any like terms? Here we have x, here, here we have x, y, 8, and then 2y. We do not have any like terms. So this is the farthest that we can go. Now, let's look at another example of this nature. So number 5, we have 2x minus y multiplied by 4x minus 3y. So again, 2x minus y is multiplying 4x minus 3y. So we can separate the 2 into 2x multiplied by 4x minus 3y, then minus y into 4x minus 3y. So opening the brackets, we have 2x times 4x, which is 8x squared. 2x times negative 3x, which is negative 6xy. So 2 times 3 gives you, 2 times negative 3 gives you negative 6, then x times y gives you xy. Then we have negative y times 4x, which is equal to negative 4xy, because y times x is xy. You might be tempted to write yx, which is still okay, but when we write these terms, we like to follow, or write it advice that you follow the alphabetical order. So if you multiply y times x, x comes before y, which becomes xy instead of yx. However, yx is still correct. And also, it's the reason why we start with the number. So instead of writing this as xy4, we start with the number. 4xy. Then now we have negative y times negative 3y. Negative times negative is positive 
then we have 3, y times y is y squared. So now we have opened the brackets. The next step is to check whether we have any like terms so that we can simplify them. So here we have x squared, here we have xy, here we have xy, and here we have y squared. So xy and xy are common, so we can simplify them. So we begin with 8 x squared, then negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10 x y, then we have plus 3 y squared. And this is the furthest that we can go with the simplification of our question. So I hope now you have understood how to expand or how to remove brackets when you have all the bright expressions. Next, we are going to look at how now do you put brackets? How do you factorize all the bright expressions? Factorization is the opposite of expansion. To expand is to remove brackets, while to factorize is to add brackets, okay? So when you are given an algebraic expression and you are required to factorize, it means that you add brackets. So we are going to do some examples and learn how we add brackets in an algebraic expression. The first example is SC plus AD plus B C plus B D. Now when factorizing, you group the terms in pairs. So we have this pair, then we have this pair. And then you are going to observe, is there any letter or is there any number that is common between the two? So here we have A, here we have A. Now since A is common and A is being multiplied by C and then it is being multiplied by D. So you can put A outside the bracket and multiply it by this C and multiply it by this D. So A is common, we put it outside the bracket, then the C which remains and the D which remains, they are put into the brackets. Because if you have understood how to remove brackets, you realize that if we were to remove these brackets, we would take A times C, which is AC, then A times D, which is AD. So you should be able to reverse that process. Next, we are going to look at these two. Do we have a letter that is common? Now B is common. So we are going to factor it outside the brackets. So after taking B out, here we remain with C. And then here, after taking B outside, we remain with D inside the bracket. So that now should you decide to open the bracket, you will have B times C, which is BC, B times D, which is BD. Now when you look at these two, you realize that here we have C plus D, which is also here C plus D. So in this case, C plus D is being multiplied by A, and here C plus D is being multiplied by positive B. So we can combine the multipliers, okay, so that we have A plus D, and then A is being multiplied by C plus D, plus B is being multiplied by C plus D. So we can multiply this by C plus D. And that is how you will have factorized your expression fully. Now let's look at another example. So in this example, we are going to have 2AD plus 8BD minus 8BC minus 2AC. So now, again we are going to pair these expressions, these terms. So here we have a pair, here we have a pair. So in this pair, we are going to identify what is common. So in terms of the numbers, we have 2 and here we have 8. So both 2 and 8 are divisible by 2. 
meaning that 2 is common when you compare the numbers. Here we have A, B, here we have B, D. So D is in both terms, so D is common. So we put 2 D after the bracket, so 2 is here, D is here. So we only have A remaining inside the bracket. Plus, 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then, since we have the outside the bracket, we will now have the inside the bracket. Remember to test. 2D times A will give you 2AD. 2D times 4B will give you 8DB or 8BD. So we are okay. Next, for these two terms, the negative is actually common. Then between 8 and 2, 2 is common, all right, because both 8 and 2 are divisible by 2. Then here we have BC and here we have AC, so C is common. So you open the brackets and then you will have, you will have 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Then since you already have C out of the bracket, you will not put it into the bracket. But since we don't have B out of the bracket, it will be inside the bracket. My, oh sorry, not minus, because we already put the minus outside the bracket, so now we are going to have plus. Okay? Then, uh, C is already outside the bracket, so we will have A inside the bracket. Now, confirm whether you are right by opening the bracket. Negative 2C times 4B. Negative 2 times 4 gives you negative 8. C times B gives you BC. Negative 2C times A will give you negative 2AC. So we are correct. Now, if you look at this, at these two factors, you realize that they are the same. A plus B, A plus 4B is the same as 4B plus A. It's like saying 2 plus 3 and then 3 plus 2. The two are the same. They both give you 5. So these two are the same. So we have a common factor here, which is A plus 4B. Okay. And then it is being multiplied in the first scenario by 2B and in the next scenario by negative 2C. So you can put the multipliers in one bracket and multiply them uh, by um, the common factor. So that is how you add brackets in uh, uh, an algebraic expression. So now next, I'm going to give you a few questions that you're going to do as the assignment to test whether you have understood the concepts taught in this lesson. So now learners, you're going to attempt these three questions to test whether you have understood the concepts that we have explored in this topic. Number one, simplify 4x minus 2y plus 3z minus x plus 4y. Number two, expand 5 into brackets x plus 2y minus 4 into brackets 3x minus y. Then finally, factorize a squared minus ab plus 4a minus 4b. As you work this out, please remember the negatives, especially when factorizing and expanding. Negative times negative is positive. Positive times negative is negative. All right? Thank you so much for being in this lesson. See you in the next lesson.